Hello all, I'm back. Had a bit of a dinner break and decided to hop back into some uh, game development or game engine development. Um, I had a stream just a couple of hours ago where I had developed um, most of the most of the um, INI writer uh, system for file writing. Um, but there was a couple of key things I needed to take care of before um, moving on to um, uh, overhauling the reader and um, setting up um, file insertion operations. Um, and I made a short list of these here. So these are some of the things I'm going to try and take care of tonight. I'm probably only going to be on for another couple of hours. Um, the first has to do with um, enforcing valid strings for keys and subkeys. So just to review what an INI file looks like, this is an INI file. Um, INI files usually will um, have a key, um, an equal sign, and then a value. Um, the value can be a string. It can also be um, a number or a float or a, um, really anything. Um, the rules aren't really well set. Um, for the purposes of my engine, um, I'm going to support um, pretty much all the fundamental types. Um, so things like um, like uh, integers, floats, um, and so on. Um, but I also have an additional uh, uh, type, which is technically an extension, where you can put parentheses around um, other key value pairs. Um, I'm calling these dictionaries. Um, I think they're useful for uh, situations like this, where you want to have a bunch of something and um, you want to um, associate, you want to like nest values. Um, any situation where you want to nest values is, um, it's, this is useful for. Um, but uh, for keys and subkeys, so subkeys being the keys that are within dictionaries, um, technically, I'm just accepting any old string. So if we go to um, some of my test code um, right now, uh, this stuff is what um, writing an INI file looks like. Um, you open up the file writer. You can either do this with the um, constructor or you can uh, call writer.open and then open up another file. Um, so you can actually use a writer for more than one file um, before you destroy it. Um, we got write comments, new sections, and write value keys. Um, and we have the ability to write dictionaries here, which accepts a map or an unordered map um, full of your key sub key values. Um, the problem with keys, though, is that presently the API doesn't care um, whether the key is valid. So if I was to say um, put a space between key and one for key one and then I press F5 to run and we take a look at the output um, file. Uh, this is the old one. Okay, there we go. And now that the program's run, you see that there's key space one and that's no longer a valid key. Um, a key has to be alphanumeric um, with um, hyphens, underscores, and dots. Um, I believe are the extra keys that are added. Um, so I need actually a way to verify that those are valid instead of just writing them out, um, assuming that they are valid. Um, so that's what I'll be doing next. Uh, let's head to the code. Um, so for starters, if we go to the INI writer.cpp where we got this stuff going, um, let's review um, the functions that um, involve keys. So that would be any of these write value methods. Um, I have a bunch of overloads to cover all the basic types. Um, I thought that was better than trying to write a template specialization that um, excluded invalid types. Um, that would have been um, less, less straightforward than simply doing a uh, version of this that um, over, that has a bunch of overloads. Um, so for each of these, um, or sorry, not those, these, um, we have the key as the first parameter, the value as the second parameter, and pretty much all we care about is 
um, getting that that first value, getting it to be um, alphanumeric. Uh, let me review the rules real quick. Um, this is a matter of opinion um, sometimes because INI is not actually a formal spec used by Windows anymore. It's just something that um, a lot of other software companies have adopted um, and I'm adopting. Um, but I saw this, uh, these rules for INI configuration file syntax um, by CERN, and I thought the rules were pretty nice. So we got alphanumeric characters, period, underscore, and hyphen are the only allowed keys. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to write a helper function for checking the string. Um, and all it will do is return true if it's valid and return false if it's not. Um, and then for each of these, I will check the key before writing. And if the key is not valid, we won't write the key value pair. Um, so it'll be otherwise a valid um, write, and the uh, developer will get a little warning in the console saying, um, hang on, uh, this key wasn't valid, so we didn't write it. Um, but then the rest of the file will still write correctly. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to make the helper method at the top. I don't think there's any great reason for me to do that, but it's just how I am. Um, I like to do um, helper functions on top um, so that you can refer to them down below, um, even if I'm not going to use it for most of these functions. Uh, so we're going to do a static so that it's not linked to other files. We'll do um, an std, or I need to return a bool. And we're going to say um, check key string validity, or uh, is key string valid? That seems better. We'll do a const std string reference. Um, and then we will do the check in here. Um, so that check is basically just um, ensuring that only specific keys are um, are used. So, or only specific characters are used in the string. Um, so that means we'll need to do a for loop. So we'll do for um, const our reference C in string. Um, I'm a fan of range-based for loops for things like this. It's just a little more readable than iterators. Um, and we will do hmm. I guess we could try doing a range based thing um, I don't want to obviously it'd be a little harsh to try um, doing a like if state if statements or a switch statement for all of them um, so I think uh, I'll put an ANSI chart Pretty sure ANSI is the same as um, Brassy. Pretty sure that these characters are all the same across systems. Are. Um, is UTF-8 different? So UTF-8 is not the encoding, right? I don't often think about these data fundamentals. Um, Unicode is the other one. That's what I was thinking of. Unicode. And I just want to compare real quick, make sure that I'm not screwing things up by doing range checks for these letters. OK, so 65 is A. seems to be the same thing for here. So uh, so between 65 and 90, or so 65 and um, yeah, 90, uh, for the capital letters, between 97 and 122 for the lowercase letters. Um, 
neither uppercase or lowercase has adjacent letters that we want to keep. So we'll just start with this range base. So we'll say um, if I guess we'll, what I'll do is I'll return in the middle of the loop if one of the characters matches, and then uh, if none of them do, then we'll return true. Uh, if C is hmm. let's start with the one-off characters. Um, are they all the same? 95 for underscore. Uh, 95 for underscore. Yep, yeah, 95 is good. Oops. Or C is not equal to. Uh, where's the dash at? I suppose I guess. Oh, that's interesting. The letters are not actually. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of other dashes. Um, in this document, uh, hyphen minus. All right, so that would be forty-five. Forty-five. Yep, that still works. I suppose if I'm being um, programmer, -y, I would use two D instead. Let me use those. Um, and then ninety-five was five F. We got the dash. Where's the dot? 56. Oh, octal is 56. 46 for a decimal. Yes. So that would be 2e. And I think that was it, right? That's um, period, underscore, and hyphen. Now we gotta do the letters. Um, now with letters, it's um, this arrangement is a little hard uh, because I want it to be, um, you know, greater than or less than um, for the letters. Um, but I'm doing not statements here, so I guess I could put. It's gonna be look a little look a little weird. And this should be ads. What I'll do is I'll just wrap the letter checks in parentheses. So um, C uh, if C was a capital letter, it would be uh, greater than or equal to um, 41, OX41. And um, less than, wait, greater than or equal to, uh, and less than, oops, or equal to 5A. So, in this grouping, we've got whether it's a capital letter, and we're saying if it's not a capital letter. Um, then we'll do the same thing, but uh, for the lowercase letters now. Yeah. Um, and the lowercase letters will be from OX61 to OX7A. That's right, just uh, um, 32 above. the others um, yeah so that should be that we got the dot we got the hyphen, one hyphen. 2d2e um, and then 5f was underscore yeah so um, if the character is not in one of these ranges then we will know that the string is invalid, the whole thing. Um, so we'll say 
um, pp error, well, pp warn. I'll present a warning to the developer that there was an invalid key. Um, I didn't put quotes there. Whoopsie. Uh, I and I writer. Um, and I'll put a little error message indicating what the key is. There's not really a fast way to do this check. Um, you kind of have to go through every letter to know whether any letter is wrong. Um, but we'll only be doing this whenever we go to write to an INI file. Um, and arguably, um, arguably, this might be something that you'd want to exclude from a, a distribution build. Um, I'm going to leave it because um, there's a non-zero chance that some dev out there will want to um, try and use something that a user types in as a key, um, which, you know, that would be, you know, weird flex, but, you know, it's okay. Um, so now we've got a helper function for checking whether the key is valid. I'll copy that name. We need to start using it. Um, so we'll say if is string is key string valid, we provide the key string, um, then we do the writing and if we don't if it's not valid then we just skip it so um, I guess really I just gotta um, paste that in or um, better yet let me do um, some fancy uh, can I do multi-line on this guy oh, I thought for sure I could do multi-line Try this again. Control F, paste. I can only do the end of the line. I can't do the return character. Oh well, I'll just copy and paste this in a bunch of places. There's only what, like 20 of them? formatted still. So cool, now we've got a way to prevent invalid keys from being written. Uh, let's test it. Let's go back to the test state. Where was I doing this? Oh, this was a test thing that I'm not even using anymore. Um, nor that. Uh, here we go. So we've got an INI file writer. Um, we've got um, writing a comment, we've got a section, um, we got key value pairs. So I place a space in this key value pair. Um, that shouldn't work. On this one I'll present do a percent sign um, and then I'll leave key value 3 alone. And press F5, that'll build it. Um, and then let me open up the text file location. This is the file that's going to be overwritten, so that should be updating in a second. Yeah, 747, we open it up. It's only got key value three. Uh, huh, hang on a second. It's got the dictionary key. It skipped key three. Numbers, I forgot numbers. Okay, yeah, let's close that up. Um, if I press F5 and look again at the console to actually get the messages. It says that um, key one is not a valid key, key with the percent sign two is not a valid key, key three is not a valid key, and key three should be, I just forgot to check for, I forgot to okay numbers, and they should be in there. So let's go back to that uh, chart. Um, 
numbers start with um, OX30 and go through OX39. Um, yeah, so we'll add that to the check. Um, section we've got key 3 equals 3.3 and we got the dictionary key which equals this dictionary value great so that was item one in the checklist that I wanted to get done tonight 20 minutes in we're on a roll uh, where did I put the uh, to-do list it was like right above the writer class with it oh it was in the it was in here that's right So now we've uh, enforced, valid, enforced valid keys for keys. Actually, there's a second component to this one which I haven't dealt with yet, and that's sub keys. That's handled down here. So we've got regular keys being checked all the time, um, but we don't have the sub keys being checked. So um, when we are going through a dictionary, so if you have called write dictionary with a STD map um, or uh, a STD unordered map, uh, we are iterating through all the keys and subkeys in there, but we are not checking whether the key is valid. So that's next step, and we can use the same helper function for that. Um, we'll say first loop writer. Um, I should do this before dealing with the rest because uh, this little block um, has to do with whether we prepend with a comma space. Um, for se comma separation, and if the first value is invalid, then we don't want to prepend the second value with a comma space. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do if um, uh, is key string valid, and we'll call that on key. Uh, then we continue. Um, one way to handle this would be to wrap the whole thing in a block. The other would be to say if it's not valid, then continue. Um, I think that might be a little more elegant. Yeah, I'm not really gaining much by wrapping this whole thing in a block as far as readability is concerned. So I'll just do if the key uh, string is not valid, then we will skip this iteration of the loop. And I need to copy that down here. Um, I don't have an implementation function to abstract these two functions into separate things because they're different types and I didn't feel like writing a template or some kind of overload that would let the helper function do either um, the unordered map or the ordered map. Um, so that should be that. Now we should test out the subkeys. So here's an example of one. Um, I'll put a space in that one. I'll put a percent sign in that one. And I'll put a number somewhere in that one. So, oh wait, that's the key um, one. That's actually not a key, that's a value. <laughs> um, and then I'll put a number in, uh, or numbers are fine. Numbers are already in there. Okay, so we got, yeah, so that should be fine. Weird character and um, space. Um, okay, and we've got sub key one is not a valid key, key value pair is not written to file, sub key two is not a valid key. Yeah, if we take a look at the file now, we've only got sub key three being written. That's exactly what we want. Um, I'm wondering if the error message though could be a little bit nicer. Like 
maybe I want to indicate that it is a dictionary key instead of just indicating that it is a um, key string. I think I'm okay with this. Um, this works well enough. Anybody who encounters this problem, they can just control F in their own INI file and see that see where that subkey is located. So yeah, I think that's that. I think that's step one of the plan is done. Uh, now the other thing was that when we use a string value, when we're writing a string or a C string, um, I want to enclose it in quotes, and that's easy enough to do. Um, so that would be these bottom, this one. Uh, I suppose this one um, for just doing a cart uh, car character by itself. Um, but definitely that one. So let's do it on all three of these. So we've got the key equals and then the value. And then around the value, we'll insert, and actually after the value too, we'll do both at one time. Um, after the value too, we'll do a insertion operator. Oh wait, we'll do quotes insertion operator. Um, right, and that should be good. Oh, I didn't uh, get, oopsie, let's do that again. Um, so let me do single quote, double quote after an escape character, single quote again, and then those. All right, um, so we're just doing the quotes character, and the quotes character. Um, and these can actually be conjoined. Um, we do um, quote character, new line character. Um, as a single string, be a little easier to read. Um, that's kind of that. That's uh, all we need to really worry about. Uh, let me go back to here. I'm going to undo all the mistakes I introduced to the keys. Um, and now we should be able to do um, spaces and like uh, percent sign and divide and star and all the other string values that we like. Um, and those should all be wrapped in quotes now. All right, good. Uh, no warnings. We open up the user file. Uh, so value one is wrapped in quotes. We got some problems here with the sub keys or the sub values. Um, we got a one. We got a percent sign in all that stuff. So it says second sub key. I think the second sub key did read correctly. Oh, sub key one was all, was a number one. That's totally fine. Um, oh, I am being a dingus. So actually, these work. These are working fine. There's only one of these that's a string. Um, so uh, on the dictionary. Uh, so what has happened is that I had forgotten to put quotes around the sub value writing in the dictionary uh, when I go to write to the dictionary values. Uh, that's actually maybe going to be a little harder than the other because we are doing we are doing a switch case for all the types that the variant can have. So um, the way that this works is that the map or the um, unordered map takes a uh, or it it, allow, it implements an ini value t, um, which is a type def for a variant of all of these types that we support. Um, so what I've been doing so far is I wrote to have std get um, to get the specific number that needs to be converted um, based on the the index value. Um, and the trouble with writing this abstractly is that I'm not sure at compile time which of these numbers um, is for the string, at least not off the top of my head. So, 
I'm gonna need to take a quick break and come back to it, but probably after I get back, we'll need to come up with some way to um, not use the number for at least the strings. Um, and then the, I, I think I wanna leave as many of these as numbers as I can, so that way I can screw around with the ordering in the um, top. But we'll cross that bridge when I get there. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break and I'll be back in a little bit.
All right, I'm back. Where did we leave off? Oh, I got a new follow since the last time I <laughs> was on. Thank you, Setrack. Uh, nice to have followers. Um, anyway, we're done with the uh, ANSI stuff. So let's head back to that list of things that I wanted to get done uh, tonight. Oh, right. Yeah, we were looking at the um, getting quotes around the string values. So um, the trouble here is that we don't know, based on the way that I have written this, we don't know which one of these uh, keys, or which, which one of these uh, get functions um, is for the string type or for the const car type. Um, we could, if we named all of the um, types that we use. Um, that's not necessarily a hard thing to do. Um, I could make a templated lookup function so that we could um, convert this into um, one of the types. Um, but the reason why I like this this the most is because we can use um, we can just add more types later if we want. Um, realistically, we're probably not going to add more types um, if we go back to the list. Like this covers like almost all the basic types. I can imagine that we'd want to serialize anything more complex. You would probably want to uh, do it as a dictionary value anyway. Um, so like, I wouldn't. Uh, like try and do a vector as um, like something in square brackets or whatever um, and try and serialize or deserialize that way. I would probably just do x, y, and z as sub values for a dictionary, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably what I'll want to do. Alternatively, we could specialize just the first three. We could take and leave all of these types um, as numbers so that we can look them up as we go, but then put these as 0, 1, and 2. And then just, just make sure that they're always the first three. Um, whenever I do that sort of hard coding, um, I would like to have a static assertion catch me if there's a problem. I don't think I can do a static assert for just the three first three part variants of a variant type. So Yeah, I guess we're going to want to name the types. I think that's probably the most straightforward way to do this. So there's going to be a fun little bit of template programming, um, which I don't get to do very often. Um, basically, we would do um, template, oops, uh, template uh, type name t. Uh, and we're going to define a struct. Um, and that'll be um, is let's say um, get I guess get type or get what's the name of the um i and i i and i value type i think is what it was called i and i value t um and this will have a templated member I think type name or type, type def um, 
I guess it's called, we'll call it value. Um, that's just the way that um, these sorts of things um, tend to get named. So the idea is that, like, if you ever work with, um, like, std enable if, um, or uh, to when, when you're doing template pro programming, you provide a template parameter, um, and then the thing that you have that, that depends on that type is called value. So we would say get ini value type. Um, though in this case, I guess invention makes it a little bit hard to read. So we would go get ini value type colon colon type, and it'll be the type depending on what the number is. Actually, does that actually solve my problem? I'm, think, I'm thinking this through now. No, it doesn't. I've got it precisely backwards, actually. <laughs> I was thinking that, that we would, instead of using std get, we would just use or instead of using std get on the number, we would just use the helper function. Um, so we wouldn't even use the switch statement. So it would be mwriter key equals and then std get, and then we would plug in um, Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, however, actually, I think because I think I'm realizing right now that I had overthought the problem. I made it more complicated than it actually was. Um, we could just simply replace these with the types. If we do that, though, then I need a way to validate or make sure that the uh, types align with the indexes or indices. That's something I don't like very much, because I uh, what if like I you know years from now come in and like do that, um, then all of a sudden these aren't in the same order that I am writing the code to infer them in. Maybe there's a way for me to get um, to verify um, which one is which statically. I'm new to variants, so I'm not really sure if there's uh, a thing that you could use. Though now that I'm reading through the other options I have here, I'm realizing that std get if is better than std get because that there is an exception. Um, I'll deal with that later. Um, what else have we got? We've got holds alternative. It checks whether it holds the um, alternative T. Which is only good if I want to like brute force check each one. Let's do a straight up Google search, see if somebody's come up with this.
So just to even statically check that, just to even statically check whether the variant contains a type, um, folks have had to cobble together something uses using um, bold expressions. And I am in C17, so I have access to those. Um, what's STD? Disjunction. Oh, this is some of the some of the more complicated um, template metaprogramming that I'm not sure if I can follow. I'm not sure that that helps me. So um, I guess I'll have to give up on that um, wish, that requirement that I, I want to have. Um, I don't have a way to statically ensure that 0 equals um, short and 1 equals unsigned short and so on. Maybe I can change this around and I can um, instead prescribe the case number based on the type. So maybe I can pr make a helper where um, nah, that wouldn't work either. I would need a way to be able to assign numbers like something like that, maybe. That's not really how template programming works. Um, what I could do is I could get use get if um, which will return a null pointer if the type is not correct. And what I can do is I can do like at, during init, I could, I could do a call to get if, um, get if, um, There is std is same. That may help. So what I could do um, with std is same, you provide two types to the template, and if they are the same, then they'll contain this struct will contain std true type. If they don't, then they'll contain std false type, um, which lets you perform a conditional. Um, in something like std enable if. Um, I wonder if I could use that to I think I could probably use that in a static assertion somehow. So let me think about that. Um, if we went to uh, here, I would want to statically assert that zero is associated with short, and so on. So, let's first start up with static assert. Um, STD, um, I do have that header, it seems like. Um, 
we could assert std is same and then I would need to get the type of the first, which would be std get zero of that might not be how to do it. Um, somehow I've got to get um, both the left and the right. So the left has to somehow be the std variant type when you're accessing the first. And then the right somehow has to be the type itself. Um, so for example, std same um, like that. Um, should work, right? Type name's not allowed. Isn't that literally how static assert works? Yeah, it's supposed to be how you do it. Oh, it is how you do it. It just in TeleSense took like three years to un undo its uh, um, bit. So I somehow got to get the type on the left of std variants type of zero. Um, let me do i i value, value t. Can I access the Type of some kind. Send back to the doc, the docs. Oh, okay, I think I'm here. I think this is what I need. Yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and I actually have a demonstration of exactly what I was trying to do in the docs. So they're statically asserting that std variant alternative zero is the same as int, which is, this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, I love it when I'm looking for a thing and I find it. That's so much better than scrounging around forever and not finding it. Um, so what we're using is std variant alternative. And the first one, the first has to be the number. And the second has to be, um, is that, yeah, they're using an alias there. Can I use a type def instead? No, I cannot. Or static assertion failed, it says. Did it? Because it should be... Oh, I didn't... Uh, um, pull out the type. Okay, perfect. That works. Okay, cool. Alright, so what this allows me to do then is it allows me to protect myself and others from doing rearranging of the elements inside here, because if they do, then one of these static assertions will break. Um, and then that'll, that in turn allows me to associate a case number with a named type. So I can put that in, in there. That's perfect. So let's get going on these. Um, how many were there? There was like a lot, 16. All right, let's do. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, and then let's do these numbers. Uh, oops. Uh, 1, uh, comma. All right. Ah, well, I didn't even mean to open that. All right. Cool. 2, 3, 4. Oh, I'm not fast at this right anymore. Five, 
15. I squared this up. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. And then uh, 16. Um, and obviously all of them are failing except for the first one because they're still listing as shorts. I need unsigned short. So let me do all the unsigns at the same time. Um, unsigned short, unsigned in, unsigned long, short, and long, long, long. Um, and then oh, whoops! Oh, that need that top one needs to be short. And then these need to be. Int. Cool. And then uh, that leaves us with float double long double. Type is one of those where it's like, when were you, when will you realistically do that? But it, there might be some weird meta programming situation where you might um, be returning an, a null value, but not as not as the point the pointer type that you're using. It's a uh, complicated, but I'm just including it there for the sake of completeness. Um, now we finally got std string uh, string. Um, car and const car pointer. All right. And Oh, I put 12 twice. Come on. There we go. So now we've got a bunch of static asserts protecting us from accidental changes here. And we've got We can now use the use the numbers um, the number associations correctly. I'm going to move these assertions from the header directly below variant to right above where they're needed, right here. Um, that does a couple of things. Um, first, it um, makes clear why I have these assertions. So, a person who's looking at these. We'll just kind of look around and they'll say, okay, that I need it because we're using std get on numbers and we need those associations to be correct. Um, if And the second is that if somebody was to make the change in here, um, like an idiot, they just come in and make the change the order up for some reason, then they will be pointed towards the problem because the assertion will be what fails and it'll the compiler will point them to this bot in the code. Um, Cool. So that's what I need. Um, now we've finally got the, got this going. I can um, get these uh, types filled in, and I, I can handle them differently per type. Um, so I guess uh, let's go filling in. Um, the last three are the ones I really care about right now: string, car, and const car pointer. Oops. Car. Last car pointer. Um, and the main reason why I care about these is because I need the I need um, quotes around them. So what we'll do is instead of just a space after the equals, I will do a quote. Oh, I need to escape it. There we go. Got a quote. Um, and then on the other side, I'll, I'll also need a quote. Um, that'll be 
just a single character with the escape clause and yeah. Um, and the same thing would go for the constant color pointer, which is a C style string. <clears throat> All right. Now, following that, um, I don't know whether I want quotes for car. I might. That's um. It's not obvious to me. Like, um, if you're in an INI file, you might want, and you wanted to encode a character, you might want something like that, right? Um, if that's the case, then the INI file reader will need to have parity. It'll need to interpret those as quotes. Um, and strictly speaking, single quotes count for strings as well in INI files. So, yeah, I think I think I'll do single quotes, um, and then in the INI file reader, I will uh, hang on a second. There we go. Um, in the INI file reader, when I finally get back to that, I will just ensure that it handles single quotes and double quotes correctly. Um, so that they both interpret it as quotes. But for readability purposes, if somebody opening it up, they'll see the single quotes and they are, they're gonna be programming in C++ the rest of the time, so they'll be like, oh yeah, that's a character, not a string. Or that's intended to be a character, not a string. That's it was serialized from a character. Um, so that should be that. Um, I could go through the trouble of like putting all the names in here for clarity, but I don't care, and it doesn't actually matter. Um, let me go ahead and copy these statements to their equivalents down here. Um, we have just a little bit of code duplication going on, but I'm okay with that. Um, so that should be that. We should suddenly now have quotes around the sub keys, or sub values. trick time just waiting for it to build and finishing things god I hate compile times right now I think I'll need to take a closer look at why that keeps happening to me it seems like it's very often it's having to recompile a lot and I don't have a good answer as to why Got the programs working. Um, we take a look at the INI file now. Uh, yes, yeah, second sub key has got quotes around it. Um, so we should be good. That should be what we need. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's uh, objective two is finished. What all string values? Good. Um, now we need to, to disallow illegal section names. Um, just like we had with strings before, or just like we had with um, keys before, um, only certain names are, are valid for um, section names. So actually, I think the same rules apply. I think I'm gonna use the same rules for um, um, for section rules. Um, because it made a lot of sense to me um, for sections to be alphanumeric with dashes and dots and underscores. Yeah, and this is what CERN uses as well, and CERN's like the only, <laughs> the only um, guidelines I found online that seem to have like an official manual to it. Um, and I kind of agree. So um, that means no spaces, no dots, or so no, no spaces, no funky characters, um, no quotes, it's just a string. Um, so 
we can actually just call is string is key string valid, um, but instead of using it on the key, we use it on the section not, section name here. Um, so let's do that. We'll do um, if key string is valid on the name that we provide, we will do the deed and get the get the section header written out. Um, and within within the um, checker itself, we have the error writer. I think th at this point, I'm going to move the error uh, message out or the warning message out of this block and put it into the right value sections. And the reason why is because it's being used for uh, section section names now. And there's not really an easy way to, I mean, if I, I don't want to say key or section name, that seems, yeah, I'll just be a little bit more specific. Um, and then I can also use the, use more specific error messages for um, issues with the names of sub keys in the dictionaries. So let's take that out. And now all the thing that does does is return false if the um, if there's a problem or return true if everything's fine. Um, and if we go into each of these now, we'll need to turn each of these into a block and write a warning out. So this would be I and I writer new section. Um, it would say uh, blank is not a valid section name. Um, and in the case of an invalid section name, um, I'm thinking we may actually want to do something here um, to try and preserve the data because the um, if we don't do anything when we are told to start a new section, then all of the following keys and values will be written underneath the wrong section. And that's not great. Um, we still want that data, potentially, um, that's being written to the file, even if the um, even if there's a problem with the section name. So, I guess what we could do in the case of the new section um, call is we could go ahead and write the section header. So like we would, we would just, if we go to, um, go to a file for example um like if somebody like writes one that's got a controlled character in it like a percent sign um, or they put a space in it or whatever we just go ahead and write the section and then put then log the warning that the section name is invalid and then continue to write the keys underneath it um, that way somebody who opens up the file they can just go in, correct the name of the section, and then it will load properly. Um, and then if we're going to read a file that um, has an invalid section header, then we just don't load that section anyway. I think that's a good plan. I think that's how it should be done. So in this case, um, We will do this no matter what. We'll do do the um, writing of the section header, and we'll just say um, if the e string is not valid, then we'll print this warning.
not sure if that's the best phrasing for the message, but um, it gets the point across. Um, it may present parsing issues upon reload. Um, that's good enough for me. Um, and now for all of the write value overloads, we should now present the message. And I'll just do these all at once. Oh, what? It didn't, uh... Okay, there we go. EP form. Um, now we'll say... That's good. I just need to select these and control KF to for reformat the indentation. Uh, oh, I'm an idiot. I need to do this a little differently. So instead, we have to do it as an if else. Whoops. Oh boy, okay. I tried to paste all the lines at once. Oh, hey, Don. How's it going? Yeah, I know, it's uh, 10 followers. I've uh, not been advertising this anywhere like it's some kind of a show, but yeah, people have been popping in periodically. Um, it's just occurred to me that you probably have that, put that in the chat a while ago. Oh no, it says you're still here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's just been uh it's been really helpful to be thinking out loud while I've been working. Um it's helped me with productivity a little bit. Um so I'll type these out. Yeah. It's happened before where somebody um messaged in um and then like I didn't see it and then like an hour later I saw that they were there and they just and I just ignored him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh yeah, but it's been mostly quiet in here. I've uh, started to think about um, maybe like advertising to get some folks to come in, but um, yeah, I've just been kind of like pulling it up on my phone and leaving it on on the table and I just like forget to look at it um, I just get caught so caught up in what I'm doing um, got uh, a compressor and a noise gate not in that order um, why do I sound funny 
I'm just using the webcam microphone. It's probably not the best quality. But I think at least it picks me up when I mumble. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the way I want it. Yeah. Not a huge fan of having all these overloads, but... <laughs> um, when I answered your question... Um... Oh yeah, I've got... Um... I've got actually I can pull it up because I'm on I'm on the stream. Um, I've got on the uh, webcam mic. I've got um, oh that's not here. I've just got a noise gate and a compressor. Um, that's about it. Um, basically just to take out the noise floor when I'm not talking and to get my to prevent myself from clipping when I laugh and. Um, to make it so people can hear me when I mumble. Light suppression. Is there is there room is it constant or is it just when I talk? I haven't even bothered with RX. I don't think this is like a I don't really care about the quality of my voice on this one really, but Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, would yeah, so like I've got like um, sometimes I got a desk fan going and I've got a I've got the fan on my computer, um, and then it's just a, a crappy mic. So, um, yeah, I'll take a I'll take a closer look at that um, at some point. Um, I could tell I could say it sounds like it probably would be annoying. Um, I'll have to go back and listen to some of what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, I think I'm just about wrapped up for tonight, almost. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm on the fence as to whether I actually want to, like, keep this up as, like, um, just a place to work, or maybe I should um, get some other people to come and watch. Um, but, because there's, there is some appetite for um, live programming. But... Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But I'll figure that all off off stream. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. So anyway, I think I think the right values are fine. I just need to Oh, I need to do it for the dictionary values now. All right. Uh was that Am I on the right track I'm trying to remember what yeah I needed to make sure yeah I needed to provide error messages for the sub for sub keys now okay I got it um, so that would be um, it under here where it says if key string is not valid then we have continue I need to add the error log because I've taken it out of the helper function now. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Let me copy it out of one of these. And now it's write dictionary. Actually, for that matter, am I checking the... Oh, I'm being foolish. <laughs> so actually, this, this check is for the first key, not the sub key. Um, and now I can put that in here, the sub key. Oh my, okay. No, it, it is for the subkey. I, I was just getting it confused. What um, 
I don't think I did anticipate was that there's actually technically a naming conflict here. Um, because there's the key that's provided as the parameter, and then when I break this down to key and value, I've got that key and value. Um, which, I mean, in this scope, I'm not trying to access that key, so that's actually okay, but I should probably not have the same name for a variable in the middle of a function that has a parameter of the same name. So let me um, wrap this one up. Um, and then I'll quickly refactor these to have slightly different names. Simple disambiguation. EML key type. No handle map. Oh boy, what is this? None of these. <laughs> None of these are the simple I'm trying to refactor. That's uh, so what I'll do is I'll just um, control F it. Yeah, replace all within the Oh, and keystring got de uncapitalized for some for on accident. Cool. All right. So that puts me at uh, okay. I and I writer write dictionary. Blank is not a valid key. Valid key value will not be written. I should say um, value will not be written. Or just say dictionary will not be written. Um, and then down here we'll say it's not a valid sub key. Sub value will not be written. And we'll use sub value from the from the range base for loop. All right. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, let me copy out this block. because I didn't quite fix the um, Yeah, you done. Yeah, I'm going I'm having a blast. Take it easy. Have a great night. Oh yeah, it's like midnight where you're at right now. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> um, save your brain in the morning. I'm going to And yeah, back to where I was. Um, so now I should have correct warnings. Um, and then back to where we were in the first place, which was, what was the last thing I was working on? I'm losing my mind a little bit. Um, disallowing illegal section names, that's right. Oh, right, yeah, I was just cleaning up the mess that I made after I had um, protected against illegal section names. Well, cool. so when an illegal section name happens, we pr we still write out the section. We just present the warning saying it's not a valid section name. It may present par parsing issues upon, upon reload. Um, and then for all the rest of these, we just put a warning that says um, that it's not a valid key value not be written. And now we've got the same two, the same check for the keys and the subkeys. So for every subkey, we do the check, and we don't write. Okay, good. I think that's I think that's perfect. I think. Um, so now if we run, oh no, what did I do? Uh, 
Uh, okay. Uh, has to do with how I am recording the ma the error. Um, getting back into file writer. Must be from one of these war warnings. Oh, I didn't. I didn't include the um, key. Um, I should check the others. Now, one of the things I'm not sure that I like about SPD log for my logging library is the way that it doesn't provide helpful messages when you just format. Oh, you're gonna be streaming tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, go to bed. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I might I might be able to catch you in the morning. It tends to be that like you're streaming like a couple of hours before I'm awake, um, so I might catch the tail end. But yeah. Take it easy, bro. Have a good night. Yeah, I need to put the key in here too. All right. Yeah, that's probably it. Hopefully that'll compile. No, what's 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 left? What did I not do? Oh, there's still a there's still an issue with one of the. Um, one of the errors. Is there something that I'm formatting that shouldn't be formatable? I got short. Oh, I'm using value instead of key. All right. So some of these are types that probably don't have a OStream op operator overload or an operator or an overload for um, SPD log. So um, within this block, I need to uh, take the tail end of that message, which in this case was um, person dot value. Take that part and replace it. Place value with um, key. Place all within selection. Now we replaced 17. All right, so those are all referring to the uh, key now when we go to log the error. And I've got a similar problem here. I think I think what's what threw me off is that um, when this was a discrete helper function, I called the parameter value instead of key, and so it didn't uh, map over properly. All right, let's try this again. Okay, that compiled fine. Um, dictionary key is not a valid key. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, let's go back to the test code. So this is dictionary key, it's taking a map. And what's the file look like? So it did it did do sub key one equals one, sub key two equals second sub key, and so not yeah, so not only is dictionary key valid, but all of the sub keys were written. Dictionary key is not valid key. Dictionary will not be written. Let me take a look for dictionary will not be written. And there's just the two occurrences. Um, oh, I skipped. I've, I've been skipping steps on accident. And yeah, I just skipped another step. 
and that is that I am always printing the warning <laughs> instead of doing the check. Uh, I need to actually perform the um, the check. So we need to say it is how did I do it? Hey, these guys said so if it's valid, then we do it. Then we have an else statement um, for the sake of cleaner looking code, I will do it the opposite in here, instead of doing if and then do it and then else as the um, statement, I'll do if it's not key um, is key string valid on the key. So if the key is not valid, We'll present this warning and we will return. And then we'll continue from there. Um, let me do that for the second one. Oh, but that check has to be done before the first call to M writer. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, that's what we want. Cool. F5. Okay. Now it'll spin in her happy place. And if we take a look at the output file, it's exactly the same. Um, now I've got to test that the keys break when I do stupid things to them. So we've got. Um, Example section, I'm going to put a space in, sub key, I'm going to put space uh, space in, and sub key two, I'll put a caret symbol. Um, and that should give us some different warnings. Okay. The warnings say, new um, section, example section is not a valid section name, it may present parsing issues upon reload. Actually, I do like that error message, I think it's fine. Uh, sub key is not a valid sub key, sub value will not be written. And then sub key 2 is not a valid sub key, sub value will not be written. So if we go to uh, the file, we see that, yeah, um, example section, the section was written, um, so all these key values are still intact on the file, um, but with the caveat that this may not load correctly. Um, and then we only have sub key three in the dictionary key because uh, sub keys one and two had invalid keys. So yeah, I think that is going swimmingly. The only other thing to check out for the sake of being thorough is messing up the dictionary key itself. Because that should prevent the entire line from being written. Um, Dictionary key is not a valid key. Dictionary will not be written. Good. Um, and then in the user file will open up test I I write. And you can see we got keys one, two, three, and not the dictionary. That is awesome. Okay, I think we're nearly done here. Okay. Um, number four was to allow new line entry, and that's simple as dirt to do. Um, we just need to go to um, file.h, add a method to it down here. Um, so we got open, close, write comment, new section. Um, I'm going to put this in between those two. I'm going to say void new line. Or write new line. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That is a little more clear um, that you're inserting a new line character. Um, I guess I could do um, int uh, non <laughs> and uh, set that equal to one by default. So if you wanted to, you could add multiple lines, uh, multiple line break. Um, 
that's a, you know, if you want that, good for you. Um, just make it a little more useful. Um, and then underneath, oh, that's state manager. Here we go. Um, we got open, close, the right comment, and underneath the right comment, we'll do the definition. And then uh, we'll do M writer, and we'll bit shift out a N. Um, and then we do a for, I guess, so for and I equals zero, I is less than num, I plus plus. And then we just do it in a loop. Easy. Um, I really don't even need to test that. Um, and then what was item number five? We are going to test the valid types for values and subvalues. So um, this is to make sure that the all the all the supported values will convert correctly, um, which is kind of critical because I don't want to find out like months from now that something that piece of data is not writing that I thought would work right correctly. So um, let's go back to file.h. And I'll grab that list of types that we do support from the variant um, type def. Go back to the test state where we're testing all the stuff. I'll clear out all the test code. Um, I'll continue to write to um, test ini write dot ini. And now here we go. We'll do writer dot write comment and I'll just quickly say um, testing each type of conversion. Um, writer dot new uh, write new line. Um, and then I'll do I'll do it one key for each writer dot write. Uh, well, I, I suppose I need a section. Um, actually, that's a good point. Do I need a section? Technically, there's a global section on top of every I and I. And so before you write the first section, you're writing in that section. Um, I don't think I'm using it for anything special. Just using it as a global section, so yeah, I'll, I I won't enforce that. Um, writer dot um, write value, and now we got to do a bunch of do code duplication, um, which is going to be kind of hard. Um, I'll presume that the type name goes in here, and then we will do a value of each type. Um, so let me duplicate this um, 16 times. each of these on their own line. And if this works smoothly, I can just insert all of them into that list without having to type them all. Thanks don't often go that spot. 
absolutely for me in Visual Studio. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, control X. And then Control V. Hey, that worked kind of. Okay. Let me clear that out then. Short, unsigned short, int, unsigned int. Beautiful. Okay. And then. Um, this is going to be a hard part. again. Good. Okay. That's better. And then, <laughs> well, it's, it's marginally better. All the text is in there anyway. Um, can I control F format these? Okay, that's helped a little bit. Um, and now I just got to provide some values. Okay. So the first one will be um, one. And I think I can just get away with typing one for all of these. Um, one. Um, let me do negatives because for the unsigned types, it'll show that they're wrapping around um, to their correct minimums or the correct maximums. Um, then float. Um, I guess I don't need to, to specify the dot. Oop. Right. Oh. And then bool. I don't really need to cast that to anything. I'll just say true. Um, Constable waypointer. Um, Let's just do the address of something, like the address of the uh, text uh, texture um, handle from the from Madeline up there, um, and then null pointer. Literally, all this is is just null pointer. It's the only thing that is a null pointer type, at least to my knowledge. Um, got an std string. Um, let's just do. Um, String with an S suffix. Um, a car will do. C. And then a uh, constcar pointer, we just do D string. Okay. And I just gotta get semicolons after all of these. Oh, I'm not allowed to. I thought I would be able to just, yeah, whatever. Oh, S is not, I thought S was a built-in literal. String std literals. Huh. Yeah, you do. You can put an S after. Oh, I have to use using namespace. Whatever, I'll just I'll just freaking make it a constructor. Okay. And then 
that should be everything. That's every kind of value that we support writing. Um, the remaining thing to do is to um, put it in a dictionary value now. Actually, these are invalid um, keys, I just realized. I think uh, this API is quite succinct and I kind of like it. So I think I think I did some good job on the planning. Um, and then for the dictionary, oh, there's there's always something else, isn't there? I just realized that there was one more thing that I need to deal with after doing this test. Um, So um, earlier I noticed that there was a problem running the constructor um, for write dictionary, like doing a constructor with an um, initializer list, which um, I'm sure that I want to do an initializer list a lot. Um, but the, there's ambiguity right now because um, the initializer list could be used to construct either the unordered map or the map, and they have separate um, overloads. So I'll need to find a way to make that work um, if I don't use the um, use std map or whatever. Um, so I've got a, an std map and that's going to be uh, std string as the left operand and then enterprise enterprise um, ini value type. Um, so I've got the test map. Now I need to insert all of the values in there, <laughs> all the key value pairs in the map. So um, hopefully I can pull this off without uh, too much typing. Um, so we're going to go into test, test map with the bracket operator. Oh, yeah, problem number one. I have a, I can't, I, I don't know why I can't do that. I, I can I can do Alt-Shift and do all this, and then when I go to move left or right, it just frickin' breaks and goes back to being, yeah, I don't get it. Whatever, um, but the point is that we would, um, for each one of these, set it equal to, The thing we're going to be casting to. Um, so that would be copy that part out. Um, okay. say this, but somebody once said that programming is a thinking exercise, not a typing exercise. Um, which, you know, great quote, but 
sometimes it, it is just a typing exercise. <laughs> and that's the worst part of it for me. Okay. All of this to construct a map with all the different, every type of value that we might need. So now we've got a test map. We got a map uh, which contains the key value pairs that we want to write to a dictionary. Um, there we go. We have writer dot write dictionary. Um, that is everything. That's the whole enchilada. F five. And if this is working, then we'll find that all of the all of the values will print out with the correct. Um, all the all the values will print out correctly. Why is that? Oh, uh, whoops. On write new line, I accidentally put the uh, default value in the definition as well as the as well as the uh, on declaration, and that's not uh, not good. There we go. All right, loading. No error messages. Um, I accidentally left the text file open. I think that's okay. I think text uh, doesn't, or notepad doesn't deal with that. All right, testing each type of conversion. Short, negative one, unsigned short, um, uh, which is the maximum value for unsigned short. Maximum value for unsigned int, unsigned long. Um, because on um, my computer, on um, most com most Windows computers on Intel chips, the int or the uh, width of an int is the same as the width of a long. Um, unsigned long long. This is the sixty four bit bit maximum eighteen quintillion whatever. Um, float one two three. Bool. Um, the way that booleans are serialized in text files um, is as zero and one instead of true and false or false and true, um, respectively. Um, which I'm not jazzed about, but I might I might actually change that in this case. Oh no, I you know I should change that in this case um, because if you're writing an INI file, you're going to be wanting to write or your key value that's true instead of zero or one. So yeah, that's one that we need to change. Um, I just had a sharpie in my lap and I dropped it. Oh, here it is. Um, cool. And then const void pointer, this is just a memory address in hex. That's good. Um, I, I mean, like, you know, maybe I'd want it to do this um, to indicate that it's a hex, but I don't, I mean, the odds that somebody's going to use a uh, hex value anyways is, is pretty remote. Um, no pointer prints as no pointer, no surprise. STD string prints out correctly with the um, double quotes. Uh, the character interestingly prints out with double quotes, even though I thought that was going to be single quotes. I'll come back to that. Um, the C string prints out correctly with double quotes. So there's two things to deal with. There's the character coming out in double quotes instead of single quotes. And then there's the Boolean coming out at zero and one instead of the other. Now let's review these. Uh, bool car, const car. Is that backwards? Oh, it is backwards. Okay, yeah, because this is being sorted into an STD map, and map um, does a comparison operator on every key that you enter to make sure that it's all sorted for um, fast access. Um, so these are actually in actually out of order, and they're actually in alphabetical order um, because that's how they the strings are compared. Anyway, bool, um, same behavior. The character comes out correctly here, so I must have added the correct style of quote for car and then for and then in the dictionary call and then forgot to do it in the 
um, individual call. All right, let's come back to that. Um, mouse car uh, works fine. Mouse void uh, works fine. Double float, no. uh, long double. Null pointer, yeah. Quotes around std string. Whoops. Quotes around std string. Unsigned in. Unsigned in long. Okay, great. Yeah, so all of the values at least are coming across correctly. So I just need to go into um, the the character overload for um, set or write value, and then change it to single quotes, and then deal with the true-false thing. Cool, all right, this is working great. Um, let's go to uh, write value for here. There it is, character value. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's just a typo on my part. I needed this to be single quote, and I just gave it a double quote. Cool. Single quotes now are good for um, regular values. Now let's take a look at rules, um, which are nearby on here. Uh, string, car, car, bool. Here's bool. Um, now, as it is, I am just taking the value and um, using the OStream operator, um, the insertion operator, to handle the conversion of the uh, boolean into a string. Um, so this value is identical to what you would get if you did std c out and then shifted out a bool. Um, however, that's actually not what I want in the case of an ini file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert a ternary operator. Um, if it's true, then we'll output the string true. If it's not, then we'll output the string false. And will that work? Will I need to wrap it in parentheses? I guess I have to write that, wrap that in parentheses. Um, cool. So that's actually all it should take. Um, if it's true, then we print the word true. If it's false, then we print the word false. Um, let me throw that ternary operator into uh, this guy. This actually tells me that, so now I've got to um, find the index for bool and then use it. So the last three are string, car, and string. So then I've got two before that, and then I'm at bool. Um, so the two in between are pointer types. Pointer, pointer, bool. That's what this is. And instead of um, writing out the value as a bool, we will do the ternary operator again. Um, and do true or false, depending on the result. Um, that should be the only modification I need. Um, let me, just to make absolute, sh absolutely sure that everything is working all right in this this guy, I'm just gonna go ahead and repaste the block again. Which is something I'm doing to um, ensure that their text is identical in case I forgot to copy and paste something from from the one above. Um, that should be that. Press F5 and run it again. Those last couple of wrinkles for type writing should be done with. Um, why do I keep closing that folder? I keep needing to get back into it. All right, so reviewing what we got. Um, bool is now true instead of one. And the character is now got single quotes around it. Um, Boolean, it looks correct in here as well. Character already looked correct 
something there. Um, I think we friggin' nailed it, guys. I think we got everything I need to write. You can write. Um, and it comes out correctly. And I'm actually pretty happy with the API as well, because if we take a look at the code that it took to, to write out the key value pairs, um, just a single call to write value, key value pair in the same call. Um, hard to screw up. Um, all the overloads are being correctly specified. Uh, short, short, unsigned short, uh, and unsigned int. Um, just want to make sure that I didn't fail to test an overload. Double, long double. Cool. That might be a little bit hard to read, but what I'm doing is I'm actually um, just mousing over all of the right values that I'm using, and IntelliSense is telling me which overload is being used. Yeah, that seems to be working out perfect. All right, sweet. So that's that's that. We have the ability to write out any INI file we might want, um, including the more complicated dictionary uh, value, um, which I'm really pleased at how simple that API has come out to be. Um, but there was that last detail, um, which I didn't think about until the very end, which is the fact that if I was to try and construct a, um, an STD map using by, by passing a um, initializer list to uh, write dictionary, it uh, won't compile due to ambiguity about which version of this function needs to be called. Um, so one way that I could get around that would be to just drop one of the overloads. Um, I, I don't, like, if, if I was to um, drop the unordered map overload, a person wouldn't, um, would, they would just have to use std map to create their dictionaries. And std map is probably what most people will use um, in most circumstances. But an ordered map has its advantages in some cases. I'm, I'm not, you know, a huge data science guy, so I'm not really sure. Um, I think what I'm going to do instead, and I don't know how much trouble this is going to cause me, um, I might instead do a third overload and have that overload take an initializer list, like std initializer list, as a parameter, and then just construct it there. Um, Let's give it a shot and let's see if that would cause me any grief. <laughs> um, I have a feeling it might. Um, so uh, first, I'm uh, duplicating the signature, except I am replacing the type for dictionary with an std initializer uh, initializer list. Does that have to be typed? That might prevent me from doing what I was thinking about doing. Uh, yes, it does have to be typed. So what we can do is we can do std string. Wait. Yes, that, that we, we don't want a const reference for that, I don't think. Or do we? If we're constructing directly on an initializer list, then a const reference is fine, technically. Um, it would be an R value, but we're not keeping a copy of the R value. We are simply iterating through it and, and writing it to the internal buffer. So yeah, that's fine. Um, std w uh, const std string by reference. Um, Actually, I'm going to make this an std pair. So we'll accept pairs of, cons of std string references and um, uh, ini uh, value ty uh, type. And yeah, does that work? 
no instance of overloaded function. Um, my dictionary matches the, yeah, it's complaining because I actually, this is a class member type and I haven't put it in the header yet. But yeah, I think that works. It's freaking wordy, but um, let me finish writing out the function and then I'll copy it into the header. Uh, the idea is that um, we could construct a std map from this. Uh, does the map type have Yeah, the map type is using um, std string instead of const. I'm probably okay with that. The data is getting copied anyway, no matter how you slice it. Um, so we'll do std string. Um, and then uh, ini value t. So we've got a, we're constructing a, a local map. But we are passing it the initializer list from above. Does that fly? <laughs> it might not fly. In my head, it would fly because an, uh, uh, an initializer list with which um, is of type pair with string on the left and ini on the right, it would look just like what we need. It would have um, it would be uh, outer brackets for the whole thing, inner bracket for each pair. Um, but that might not be. Um, that might not work in this case. So what we'll have, what we'll do instead, because um, there's probably a um, type problem. I'm not really sure what consequences might arise from trying to pass uh, an initializer list around like a variable. Um, what we can do instead is we'll just do the iterative for loop or the um, dictionary. Range-based for loop, I think. Um, so we do. Oh man, I think I'm about, about to hit the hay. Um, it's like 9:40 where I'm at, so it's um, getting a little bit late. But if we go um, for every std pair, we just do auto for auto for auto. Um, Actually, yeah, I want to use structured bindings anyway. So for auto uh, key value, um, and I'll do const auto reference. So for every key and value in every pair in the dictionary, we add that key and value to the map. So we got map plugin key equals value. So we're just going to quickly iterate through through the dictionary that we provide, construct an std map, and then we call um, write dictionary with the key. Up here. Oh, you know what? I need to rename these. <laughs> Subkey. You technically don't have to have different names um, when you're doing a range based for loop and your parameters, but because, because the scope um, will mean that when I reference the term key, it will use the one that I use up here, not the one from up top. But I mean, we're, you know, I want to semi-quasily act like a professional if I'm not actually one. Um, and then we'll do the map. And that should work. The one thing I don't like about it 
is that it's what's removing the operation. It's constructing a map and then iterating through that map again. So we're iterating through the initialize list just to iterate through it again um, when we do the operation. You know what? I'm going to hate myself for doing this. <laughs> I am going to straight up make a third overload with duplicated code. I don't even care right now. Um, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because literally it's the same range based for loop. We're doing um, a constant auto reference, sub key, sub value from the dictionary, and that's totally fine when you have a std pair as um, the type in your initializer list. Um, that's, yeah. Um, so I guess that's going to be how, how it has to be um, for, the, for the moment. Um, having three versions of exactly the same code, <laughs> like where the only thing that's different is the type, that kind of screams, like you can see that now we're encompassing like half the file almost uh, at this at this point yeah that screams that I need to have an implementation function and then refer to it um, which I'm just going to deal with later um, for the moment I want to confirm that my overload actually does work so I'm going to go into ini writer and add this overload for write dictionary Now, moment of truth time, I need to confirm that this will work on writer. So I'll go writer dot write dictionary, dictionary from uh, init list is going to be the name of the key. And then the value will be structured like so. It'll be key value pairs. Um, in an initializer list. So we got sub key one, and that's going to be paired up with um, sub value one. We already know that the uh, that these will convert correctly because we did the tests earlier. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times. Um, the same value or not. Um, oh, I do though. I do care if there's the same value. Um, duplicate keys are, are allowed in, um, they're allowed in the overall mapping, but they, they aren't allowed in the, they aren't allowed in, in dictionaries. Um, I gotta add that requirement. Um, Um, that, that wasn't a problem until now because um, both unordered map and um, map um, already disallow duplicate keys. Um, but std initializer list doesn't care. Um, so I'll need to deal with that later. Um, assuming this works. So we go sub key one, two, three, and four. Um, we don't have red underline, so it seems like Visual Studio is not complaining now. And if I go to build and run it, I have a suspicion that it'll just correctly work. And we'll see um, the dictionary key print perfectly from the constructor. Okay, it runs, at least. No, it didn't work. Okay, what went wrong? 
So the constructing from the um, STD map worked, but dictionary from a net list. It didn't seem to take it. Let's inspect what happens when we run this. All right, so we're about to write the dictionary. We go in, out, in. What am I um, missing here? I press in and out, and it takes me out to non-trivial move. Assign. Oh, hang on. It's going through all the, um, it's stepping through all of the move assigns from each of the, okay, yeah. So that was all the move and copy operations that occurred. Um, constructing the initializer list. And now it's going through every string. Um, we should get out of that. Um, for every character in the key. All right, so here we are. We've got the initializer list. Um, let's inspect that real quick. Size of four. Um, sub value one. What is up with the key, though? Is that supposed to be the key? Dictionary 0.first. Yeah, so the key is coming out wrong. Why would that be? It should be an STD string. Oh, hang on a moment. It's a const reference and that's an R value. I need to change this to an R value reference. That's, okay. The single ampersand gives you an L value reference. Um, so it means that when you pass something in, um, you're not actually copying the, um, copying the value. You are um, instead uh, kind of pointing to it without actually using a pointer. Um, an R value reference is necessary when you're doing that for um, a temporary value, um, which in the case of a constructor, or in the case of an initializer list, that is the case. Um, should I be doing the same for the values? I'm gonna just see whether that works, whether that change was enough. Move semantics is one of those topics that like, you know, I should have taken a class on in college or something. It's got a lot of um, complicated detail that doesn't matter at all until it suddenly matters a lot. Okay, build errors, error list. Cannot convert from argument to from initializer list. To std initializer list, std pair const std string. Yeah, so that didn't work. Um, we're gonna need to pass by a value if we're gonna do this. And I don't like that at all. I think that's a terrible way to live, <laughs> um, passing around all this stuff by value, but I think that might be what it has to be. Hopefully the compiler will just optimize away that extra copy anyway. Okay, no errors. Let's take a look at that. 
dictionary from list. Okay, now the dictionary from a net list is working. Um, so I guess I'm just I guess I guess I just have to pass it by value. I can make it const, um, no problem. Um, it just has to be. Um, by value and not by reference. I wonder if I should make all of these const, const strings for their keys. Um, by virtue of being a key, it kind of implies that it's const. Yeah, that's kind of, or at least it implies that you shouldn't change it. Um, because if you change it, then you're working on a different um, key. Yeah, so I think that's probably all right. Probably what we have, have to do. Um, let me take the const out of the declaration here. But, I mean, bright side is that it works. And it probably will work, probably continue to work. Um, well in this build. Um, so when you are um, passing a value to a um, function parameter, um, I think that the compiler will actually um, construct that in place, that memory in place. So I think it's like, and I'm, I'm not at all an expert on this, um, so I'm Gonna get some details wrong, but my uh, understanding is that when you go call the function and a new um, stack frame is is allocated or you're uh, taken off the put onto the stack, um, a whole new stack frame, that stack frame um, one of the one of the things that's encoded in it is the parameters that you'll use. So if you're constructing the initializer list within the parameter list, then theoretically that construction is only happening once because it's being constructed, but the location that it's being constructed in is already where the parameter will be read from when it's used in the next stack frame. Um, some computer science person will probably know better than I about um, whether or not this is an unnecessary optimization. I mean, it's they're kind of all unnecessary optimizations at this point. Um, I think this is probably far better than it needs to be. Yeah, so, okay. So I think that the initializer list business works fine. I think we're there. Um, we've, we're able to do this for SDD map, SDD unordered map and so on. Um, the last two details are that we need to disallow duplicates, duplicate keys. Um, and that's one area where this is going to um, differ from the other two function calls. Um, because when you're using the um, unordered map and the uh, regular map, they already have unique keys for every everything. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, but in the case of the initializer list, we would need to confirm that the uh, first that the first uh, string is only called once per pair. That's a complicated one. I don't want to construct a. Um, a map and then push the push them all into the map and then take that map variable and, and pass it to the other function. Um, I don't want to do anything like that. Um, so I guess what we would need to do is during this loop where we go to right I guess what we can do is that we can like use like an STD set or something like that to track every single um, sub key that 
comes across in the dictionary. And then if we come across a duplicate while we're iterating through the list, we just won't write that duplicate. We'll leave it with just the first. So I think we can do that in here. Um, and this is another difference that's going to make it um, harder to write a, to, to bring this into a single function and not have like three duplicates like we do now. <laughs> I'll think about how to consolidate those offline, but for now let's just get this working. Um, so for the initializer list version of this function, we'll be in this loop. We'll need to have a way to track um, the sub keys. Um, so we'll need to have an std set of it. Of, um, I guess what I'll do is I'll do an SCC uh, set of hash names. A hash name is a type that I have that I use in enterprise for um, hashing strings rather rapidly and then uh, storing them as 64 bit ints. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll make a set of hash names. Um, and then as we come across each string, I will hash it and push it in to the set. And we will compare this, compare against the hash, not against the um, not against the string, and that'll save us a little bit of time for, for all the string comparisons. Um, so as to the set of hash names, um, we'll be using, um, I guess I'll call it used sub keys. Um, then I think I, if I'm remembering SD set correctly, we use pushback or no we use the um, we use the operator that we do for um, map I think we use um, don't we no, I guess we don't use the square uh, brackets I thought for a second that you do and then it just what it just does is it um, it's like a key without a value um, but instead we'll need to use um, in place or push back. I think in place is what we need. Um, that way we can just construct the um, hash directly in the, yeah. So for every single one of these, we'll do um, used sub keys dot in place and we'll convert the, um, we'll make a hash of sub key. So now we've got the set is extended by the hash of the subkey. Um, but I need to know whether it's full already. So taking a look at the return value, it returns a pair consisting of an iterator to the inserted element or the already existing element. And the second member of the pair is a bool denoting whether insertion took place. Um, so I need to watch for that second element to turn false. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say if use sub keys dot in place dot second that should get us the bool. Um, so if that's true, then the assertion happened. If not, then the key already exists. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do not at the beginning of that. So if you sub keys that in place hash name of the sub key dot second. <laughs> so if the um, sub key uh, already exists in the set, then we'll know that this is the second time we've seen the sub key and we'll have a duplicate that we want to uh, get rid of. And we can do that by, or, or a duplicate that we want to skip. So um, we would do that by using continue. Um, that'll bump us to the next sub key value, sub value pair in the dictionary. But before we do that, um, we need to produce a warning. Um, and I writer, whoop, that's all caps. And I writer, write dictionary. And we'll say, in 
quotes like I'll say the sub Q blank was Specified. Yeah, that's that seems right. And continue after that. Cool. All right. Um, you know, now that I'm looking at that, I'll I want to put that check after validity check of the string. I mean, obviously, you can't, you can't. This is an error condition either way. Um, but if the reason why the duplicate was, I mean, if, if, if there is a duplicate and there's two keys that have the same misspelling, um, I want to draw attention to the fact that it was misspelled, not the fact that there's a duplicate. Actually, I changed my mind on that after I saying that out loud. Um, because the first time you go through this, you'll be you'll have your attention drawn to the fact that there's a misspelling. And if you've somehow misspelled the same thing twice, then you'll also have your attention drawn to the fact that you have a duplicate. Um, so copied and paste. Not only did you have a misspelling, but you copied and pasted the misspelling or something like that. So I think that's what we need. Um, that'll do the trick. Um, so if we add the same sub value twice, let me try that real quick. So now we've got two sub key ones in the second dictionary. I would expect to see uh, a warning and have only the first sub key one appear. Okay, that seems to be working. We do see the warning, the subkey, subkey one is specified more than once, sub value will not be written. And if I open up the file, I see only one subkey one. Mm, perfect, that's great. Yeah, I think that's all I want to do tonight. I guess the last thing would be to get rid of those duplicates, get rid of all that duplicate code. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that until a later time. I'll probably do that offline. Um, probably not going to stream that part. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the stream because it's 10 p.m. It's getting late. Um, thank you for the folks who had joined me uh, while I was working on this. Um, yeah, nice to have a little company. Um, have a great night. Otherwise, see you later.